Hi guys, welcome to our channel Learn with Raji. Today we are going to learn about immunofluorescence technique. Immunofluorescence is nothing but study of antigen and antibody complexes by using fluorescence tagging. In this video, we are going to see introduction, principle, fluorescent compounds, types of immunofluorescence, advantages, limitations and applications. Introduction Immunofluorescence is a method in biology that relies on the use of antibodies chemically labeled with fluorescent dyes to visualize molecules under a light microscope. For a successful immunofluorescence staining, it is crucial to have a good antibody that will specifically detect the antigens with the molecule of interest. Fluorescent molecules absorb light of one wavelength and emit light of another wavelength. We are going to evaluate excitation and emission values to detect the antigen and antibody complexes. Principle behind immunofluorescence technique If antibody molecules are tagged with fluorescent dye, immune complexes that is antigen antibody complexes containing these immunofluorescently labeled antibodies can be detected by colored light emission when excited by light of the appropriate wavelength. The emitted wavelength can be viewed with a fluorescent microscope which is equipped with a UV light source. This technique is basically known as immunofluorescence. Next we, go, we are going to see fluorescent compounds. Many compounds are having the properties of fluorescence, especially fluorescine and rhodamine are commonly used. Phycoerythrin, an intensely colored and highly fluorescent pigment obtained from algae species. These molecules can be conjugated to the FC region or crystallizable region of an antibody without affecting the specificity of the antibody. Fluorescine is an organic dye that is most widely used la label for immunofluorescence procedures. It absorbs blue light in the range of 490 nanometer and emits an intense yellow-green fluorescence in 570 nanometer. Rhodamine is an another organic dye absorbs in the yellow-green range 550 nanometer and emits a deep red fluorescence in 4 sorry 546 nanometer phycoerythrin is an efficient absorber of light approximately 30 fold time greater than fluorescent compound and a brilliant emitter of red fluorescence stimulating its wide use as a label for immunofluorescence types of immunofluorescence techniques generally immunofluorescence has two methods direct staining method and indirect staining method as the name suggests direct staining method has the specific antibody or primary antibody directly conjugated or covalently bound with fluorescein compound the picture explains cells with membrane antigens has attached with the primary antibody which is given in blue color which is already tagged with fluorescent compound which is given in green color. So we are going to measure this fluorescence by fluorescent microscopy. Indirect staining using the primary antibody unlabeled one and is directed with an additional fluorochrome labeled reagent. The picture explains the cell membrane has the antigen the blue color antibody denotes the primary antibody. In the FC region of primary antibody, the secondary isotope which already labeled with fluorescent has attached. In picture C, instead of secondary antibody, here they are using protein which is already labeled with fluorescent molecule. So we are going to find the emission 
from these fluorescent molecules by using fluorescent microscopy. Direct method versus indirect method. In both direct and indirect methods, we are using primary antibody. In direct method, primary antibody itself is tagged with fluorophore or enzyme. In indirect immunofluorescence assay, the use of secondary antibody is coming. The primary antibody is bound with secondary antibody which is already tagged with fluorophore or enzyme. Advantages of indirect immunofluorescence over direct immunofluorescence. The primary antibody does not need to be conjugated with a fluorochrome because the supply of primary antibody is often a limiting factor. Indirect method avoid loss of antibody that usually occurs during the conjugation reaction. Indirect methods increase the sensitivity of staining because multiple molecules of the fluorochrome reagent bind to each primary antibody molecule increasing the amount of light emitted at the location of each primary antibody molecule. Limitations It mainly depends on quality and concentration of antibody, proper handling of specimen, choice of secondary antibody. The main limitation is fluorophores undergoes bleaching as they are exposed to light. Applications Immunofluorescence technique has many applications. The important applications are discussed here. To identify a number of subpopulations of lymphocytes, especially CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cell subpopulations are identified by using immunofluorescence technique. Identifying bacterial species, detecting antigen antibody complexes in autoimmune disease. Detecting complement components in tissues and localizing hormones and other cellular products. The important application of immunofluorescence technique is localization of antigens in tissue or in subcellular compartments because it can be used to map the actual location of target antigens. Fluorescence microscopy is a powerful tool for relating the molecular architecture of tissues and organs to their overall gross anatomy. With this, we have seen immunofluorescence techniques. I hope you will understand about immunofluorescence technique. If you like this video, give like and kindly subscribe our channel. Thank you.